to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ children obey your parents in the lord for this is right ephesians chapter 6 verse number 1 welcome to our final lesson godly homes in an ungodly world in this series of lessons we have tried to reach out to those who are in the home, whether it be father, mother, children, those thinking about getting married, to set some biblical standards, whether it be for dating, whether it be for having a successful marriage, or the role and responsibility of each in the home with the mindset and desire of making our homes godly homes in an ungodly world. We want to encourage you, if you're watching our broadcast today, to visit the Church of Christ in your area. The Churches of Christ are a group of people who have a firm belief in the Bible as the sole authority in everything we say and do and have a deep concern for souls living with God in heaven for all eternity. If you've never visited a Church of Christ, we encourage you to do that. If you'd like to have a copy of our lesson series on the godly home, we'd love to make that available to you free of charge. You can visit our website thegospelofchrist.com and you can contact us via email or phone through that or the contact information at the end of this broadcast. From our website we also have a host of Bible study materials on a variety of subjects. You can access those free of charge online or we have a media request form by which you can contact us and we'd be glad to send you any study material that you'd like to have. And if you've got a Bible question, regardless of what that question is, please write to us and let us know what that question is and we'll do our best to give you a book, chapter, and verse answer from the Word of God, not the opinions of men. Today, as we conclude our series on godly homes in an ungodly world, we think about the role and responsibility of children in the home. Now we understand that the father is the head. The mother is that keeper of the home, the one who takes care of those in the home as well. What about the responsibility of children? Children are in submission to both parents and have the responsibility to obey, to submit and to comply with the guidelines of God and their father and mother. I want to begin by just mentioning some Proverbs that I hope will set the tone and tenor for children in the home and offer encouragement as well. Proverbs 27 11 says this, My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me. What do parents really want from children? children who will have the forethought to think about the decisions they make and make their parents glad by making the right choices in life. That's what every parent wants. Listen to Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 11. The Bible says, Even a child is known by his deeds, whether what he does is pure and right. What are parents looking for? Children who will make decisions and choose the right action because it's pure and it's right. I understand. There's a lot of peer pressure today. There is the desire to be popular and liked. But what parents and God are really looking for is children who will make decisions first and foremost because they're pure and they're right in the sight of God. Listen to this proverb. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1, the Bible says, A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. Parents want children they can be proud of, 
who are following God and the dictates of His heart, as well as living up to their responsibility in the home. Notice this proverb as well. Proverbs chapter 17, verse number 25 says, A foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to him who bore him. Don't live your life in such a way that your actions and choices grieve your parents or make them become bitter toward you. Rather, strive to live as God wants you to in the home. How is that? Listen to Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1. The Bible says to all young people, Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. What's one of the key ideas for young people to live a successful and godly life? Here it is. Remember your Creator. What's that mean? Put God first in every decision you make, in the home, in the job, in dating, in recreation. Ask yourself, does this, will this decision help me to seek first God and His kingdom? Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33. Now, we begin by thinking about the home and the role of children in the home with a blockbuster passage concerning this idea in Ephesians 6, beginning in verses 1 through 3. Notice what the Bible here says. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, and here's the promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. When you think about the Holy Spirit's instructions to children, you really got two breakdowns here. Children are to obey their parents. The Bible says in Colossians 3 verse 20 that they're to obey their parents in the Lord. Ephesians 6 verses 1 through 4, as is fitting in the Lord. Romans 1 verse 30 mentions those among those sins of the Gentiles, those who were disobedient to their parents. Children, listen carefully. You're not the authority. You're not the decision maker. Your responsibility in the home is to obey. Does that mean that your ideas, that your suggestions, that your feelings are to be completely ignored? That's not what's being said. Any godly father or mother who is seeking to have a godly productive home is always thinking about what's best for the welfare, spiritually, physically, emotionally, of our children. But you've got to trust that your parents, if they're godly parents, are striving to do that. Even though you may not see eye to eye in every situation, your responsibility is to obey. Not to talk back. Not to rebel. Not to belittle. Not to make fun of. Not to degrade. To obey. That's what God says your responsibility is in the home. Secondly, in Ephesians 6, verses 1 through 3, the Bible says children are to honor father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. What does it mean to honor father and mother? Do you remember Proverbs 31, where of the virtuous woman, her children rise up and call her blessed. That's the idea. When you honor a father and mother, you are going to obey them. You are going to respect them. You are going to want to follow their guidelines and you're going to appreciate and be thankful for what your parents do. Listen very carefully. Around this world, and even the United States of America, there are a host of children, multitudes of children, who have parents who really don't care very much for them. We hate to say it that way, but it's true. Be thankful. If you're a godly, if you've got godly parents, be thankful that your parents love you enough to try to look out for your spiritual welfare, to try to help you and guide you and set standards for you to follow that are based off of the teaching of Scripture. You have such a blessing 
that you fail many, that we fail many times to realize in having godly parents who love us enough to discipline, to care, and to protect us in so many ways. And so honor and obey. That's the responsibility of children to their parents. What else can a godly child in the home do? Godly children need to be a good example for their family in every way. You know, when we think about what can a young person do in the home? Here's one of the things that is so powerful. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4 verse 12, Paul speaking to Timothy, a young person said, be an example to the believers in word and conduct and love and spirit and faith and purity. What can you do in the home? Be a godly example. That's what your parents need of you. That's what you need to do in the home. Set the example. I want to study my Bible. I want to pray. I want to honor father and mother. I want to obey them. I, I want to live up to the example of Christ in every way. I want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus in the home. 1 Peter 2, verse 21 and 22. Now, I want to show you the power of this by mentioning some young people who were indeed great examples to their family. David stands out as a young person who was a great example. Do you remember the story of David and Goliath? 1 Samuel 17, verse 33, David had heard that, that Goliath taught the people of God, and he said, I'm going to trust God. I can defeat this giant. And he went over there, and with those few small stones, the young man David cut off, defeated Goliath, knocked him to the ground, cut off his head, and became a great leader in Israel. Look at the example. What about his brothers? They were scared to death of Goliath. And yet, David went over there, put his trust in God, and became a powerful example of a young person to his family. A couple of other examples. Both Timothy and Titus are told to be examples. And look at the example they set. Preaching the Word of God, teaching others, becoming young evangelists who no doubt would instruct and teach the lost as well. No doubt that had a great impact on their family as well. You know, when I think of another example of a young person who no doubt was an influence to their family, I think of Jesus at the young age of 12. Jesus had got separated from His family. Luke 2 verse 49, they find Jesus in the temple and it's as though they're going to scold Him. Did you not know that your mother and I were looking for you? Where have you been? And Jesus says, Did you not know I must be about my father's business. What did that mean? Jesus was in the temple asking questions and teaching the teachers of the law at the young age of 12. What a powerful example for Bible study and evangelism that must have set for both Mary and Joseph concerning their son. You know, as we think about young people in the home, one of the things that every young person desperately needs in the home, all people need, but especially young people, is to put God first, even if family may not. Now, the actual design that we've been discussing much is where you've got a father and mother who love the Lord supremely, who are putting God first, who are setting guidelines for the home, and who desire that their children do that. But even if you live in a home where you may be the only Christian as a young person, what can you do? Put God first. As a young person, remember your Creator. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1. Remember that your desire, your responsibility and privilege is to put God first. The writer of Ecclesiastes said in chapter 12 verse 13, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What's life all about? Fear God. Keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. That's why we were created. Isaiah 43, verse 7, God says, Everyone who is created by me, who gives my name, honor, and glory, I have formed him. Yes, I've made him. God said, I've created him for my glory. Whether we eat or whether we drink or whatever we do, we're to do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31, Young people, have the mindset of Paul. For to me, to live as Christ. Seek first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33. Think about the good you can do in your classroom, on the ball field, and among other young people if you set the example of leadership 
for putting God first as a young person. Let me give you some examples. On the ball field, remember you're still a child of God. Set the example of how a Christian would act in dress on the ball field, in your language on the ball field, in the love and care and concern you ought to have for others. Those are the actions we need among young people at school. Be an example to your fellow students. Behave like one, even when other people may be doing things that are immoral or immodest. Don't partake in that. Use language that encourages others to live in a godly way. You'll be, you'll be surprised if you'll stand up for Christ, even as a young person, and live as God wants you to live. You'd be surprised how many people respect and actually want that and would follow your leadership in that area. Young people be an example on a date. When you're dating, remember God's teachings. Oh, we all understand that there may be desires and passions that naturally God has given for the right place. Let's remember that place. Marriage is honorable, the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Hebrews 13, 4. As a young person dating, let your standards be known. Let people know that you don't believe in those relations before marriage and that you're going to keep a high standard and that you expect those whom you date to set that same, same standard. And friend, when you do that, the kind of person you're wanting to help you get to heaven is not far away for you'll be looking for that person and they'll be looking for you as well. And remember this, as a young person, remember to be an example to yourself. Even when you're alone, you've got to set that example because God's always watching. Hebrews 4.13 says, There's no creature hidden from His sight. All things are open and naked before the eyes of Him with whom we must give an account. Proverbs 15.3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place. When you're at home, maybe by yourself, God sees the kind of music you listen to. God sees the programs you watch. When you're on the computer, God knows what you're looking at. Don't look at things, don't listen to things, don't watch things, don't do things, even when you're alone, that would not be approved in the sight of our God. And so as a young person in the home, be a godly example to everyone. What else is God's encouragement for people in the home? One of the things that God encourages in the home is for young people to really be the kind of example especially when it comes to hard work that God desires in the home. Let me give you an example. I want you to listen to a, a not very well-known passage in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3. Listen to what the Bible says to young people about hard work. Verse 27 says, It is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. What's, what, what's the idea there? Bearing the yoke is working hard, bearing a burden, carrying the load. What is needed of you in the home to be a hard worker? Not, don't be lazy. Don't expect mom and dad to do everything for you. Don't expect to be waited on hand and foot. Rather, bear the yoke in your youth. Work hard as a young person. Ultimately, we want you, God wants you, to work hard first and foremost to getting to heaven. That's the first thing you need to work hard on. Revelation 21 describes that place as a place where there'll be no sorrow, pain, crying. All the former things have passed away. A place of rest. Matthew 25, 46, Hebrews 4, verse 9. Above everything else, work hard on getting to heaven. But you know what? In the home, you need to work hard as a part of the family. That means that you need to do your share of the chores when it comes to vacuuming or doing the dishes or keeping your room clean or whatever it may be, mowing the yard, whatever it is. Work hard. Work hard at growing in Christ. The Bible says grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then as a young person in the home, such an important aspect that we want to illustrate from Scripture for every young person in the home is you need to be teachable. Listen to Psalm 71, verse number 17. Every young person needs to have the mindset that is mentioned in Psalm 71, verse 17. The Scripture says, O oh God, You have taught me from my youth, and to this day 
I declare your wondrous works. You know what was great about the psalmist? He was teachable. God had taught him from his youth. We need young people today who are teachable. I understand there's the idea and the mentality that at this age we know everything, we can do everything, you don't need to be told anything. Friend, that's just not true. Young people need to be teachable. Don't have a, a, a know-it-all attitude. I know it all right now, I've got it all figured out, and I can accomplish everything. That's not the attitude you find in Scripture. The correct attitude is found in Luke 11, verse 1, where Jesus' disciples said, Lord, teach us. That's the mindset young people need. Lord, teach us. We want to learn and know. Hey, let's all realize we don't know everything. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29 says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that He has revealed belong to us and our children. None of us have it all figured out. There's some things we may never know. But as a young person, you're at the point in life where you need to be one who's ready to learn, to grow, to receive instruction. When someone tries to correct or teach or maybe even show you a better way to do something, don't rise up and act like you've already got it all figured out, even if you may have a better way. Still be respectful enough to listen, and you'll be surprised at just how much you can learn in situations like that. What else do we need from young people in the home? We need young people who are willing to let the Bible mark them. The Bible says in Psalm 119, especially to young people, beginning in verses 9 through 11, the Scripture will say that young people are to let God's Word make an impression or a mark on their heart. The Scripture records of a young person that they have been taught by God, your word I've hidden in my heart. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. And then he says, your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. How can a young man make his way right? By letting the word of God make the correct mark upon them. You know, as a young person, you need to study the scriptures diligently. Study to show yourself approved unto God. That's what Timothy, Paul would say to Timothy, a young evangelist. Acts 17, 11, we're all to search the Scriptures daily. Your words were found and I did eat them. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 15, verse number 16. You know, as someone who may be young in the faith or a young Christian especially, you need to study and apply the Scripture very diligently to your life. Paul would say in Philippians 4 verse 9, The things which you have heard and received and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. We also want to impress upon every young person's mind, every person, but especially young people, that as a young person you desperately need to flee those things which are not right, which are ungodly in the sight of our God. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I want you to notice what Paul will say in verse number 22. Paul would say, Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You know, as we think about the responsibility of young people, one of those responsibilities is to flee, to run from, to get away from certain things. What are those things? Youthful lust. There's no doubt that sometimes emotions, attraction, desire, and passion run very high among young people. There's no doubt that many of the movies, songs, things you see in magazines, and things you see from day to day, even the way people dress, cause that problem to be exacerbated sometimes. What does the young person need? Flee youthful lust. I'm talking about things like sexual morality. A young person needs to run away from, do nothing with, be, be separate from immoral things sexually. Remember again, Hebrews 13, 4 says, marriage is honorable, and inside the marriage, marriage relationship, the bed's undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 gives such sage advice for young people. The Bible says, Abstain from fleshly lust, 
which war against the soul. How can you flee youthful lust, abstain from it? Don't put yourself in a situation where that's going to be a, an attraction or a temptation. Don't be alone with somebody when that, where that might occur. Don't be in a movie or somewhere where that might be something you'd be prone to give into. Abstain from it is God's guideline. And then, of course, young people need to flee other desires and passions as well. Drugs, alcohol, tobacco. The Bible says wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. To young people today, God wants you to know, and we want you to know as well, you have in the home such a wonderful responsibility and privilege. You have the power to set the example, to encourage your parents, to give them something they can be uh, proud of, and just as God desires to have godly children, parents, want children who are also putting God first. Your role in the home, although it is a role of obedience and submission and respect to your parents, can do so much good for making the home a place where people are, are happy, where the relationships are loving and joyful, and where you can actually help and encourage your parents to be what God wants them to be. And no doubt, you can do so much to encourage your friends and your peers to learn more about Christ. You know, one of the things that young people especially have a great opportunity for is evangelism. Young people, you have as much or more opportunity to evangelize at your age than you will at any other. You're around more people. You contact different people in so many ways. And look at the good you can do for reaching others for Jesus Christ. And so, the words of Paul, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. Our hope and prayer is that each child will strive to obey and honor their parents to truly have a godly home in an ungodly world. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form, or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905, or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.